Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo. In my last video, I showed how you could quickly place your party and some helper tokens on a battle map in Roll20. And in response to that video, I had a viewer ask, hey, would it be possible to have that helper token automatically be moved to the GM layer when you place the party? And the answer to that is absolutely yes, you can. But we will be using mods in order to achieve this, so a pro account is required to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So the first thing we want to do is go into our game's settings page here, and we want to go to Mod API Scripts. And within here, what we want to do is install a mod called Script Cards. Script Cards comes to us from the amazing Kurt Jagers. This mod is something I use in every single one of my games, regardless of what system I'm playing. It's just incredibly versatile. So, Kurt, thank you so much for making this and for everything you do for the community. If you've never installed a mod before, you just want to click on the mod library here, and in the drop-down, type the word Script Cards. It'll pop up, you can install it, and then you're good to go. Once Script Cards is added into our game, we'll jump back into our game. And now what we need to do is go into our journal section here, and we're going to create a new character, and we're going to name that character script cards underscore triggers. And it's very important that you get the name exactly as it is here. Capital S, capital C in script cards, underscore, capital T in triggers. We're going to save changes here. So essentially what happens is script cards has this capability called triggers. And what triggers do is they listen for specific events to take place in Roll20, and then they trigger a particular action based on that event. And we're just going to say we're going to edit this sheet directly. So for example, if we look at the script cards documentation, which I'll put down in the video description, there's a whole bunch of these events that we can key off of. So when a graphic gets added to the battlefield, we can trigger certain actions. When a graphics properties change, like it gets resized, then that can trigger certain actions. When a graphic gets destroyed, that is you delete it, then certain actions can be taken. So what we want to do is trigger a particular action when a graphic gets added to the battlefield. And the action we want to trigger is to move that graphic to the GM layer. So essentially, when our helper token gets added to the battlefield, we want to key off of that event and trigger moving it to the GM layer. So how do we do that? Well, on our script cards triggers character sheet, we're going to go to attributes and abilities. And we're going to put in the name of the event that we want to listen for. So add colon graphic. So basically what we're saying here is when the add graphic event fires, we want to trigger whatever code we put in this ability. So what's that code going to look like? Well, rather than typing inside this little box, I'm going to swing over my trusty notepad plus plus window here. And the first thing we're going to do here is type in exclamation point script and then two open curly braces and two closing curly braces. That tells Roll20 that everything between these curly braces is part of this script card. And the first line in the script card that we're going to add is a very special comment called trigger replacements. Essentially what's going to happen is when this card runs, script cards is going to pull add graphic from the ability and put it in here. That's how we're going to know to perform this particular action when the graphics get added to the battlefield. The next thing we want to do is check the name of the graphic that was added to the battlefield. So if we look at my GM helper character sheet here, we want to look at its token and we can see that its tokens name is encounter token. So what we want to do is check to see if the name of the graphic that was added to the battlefield is encounter token. And if it is, then we want to move it to the GM layer. And if it's something else, like if it's one of my characters, like Ronya or Penelope or Prudence, we don't want to move them to the GM layer. We only want to move a token named Encounter Token to the GM layer. So to help with that, we're going to start with this line. And what this line is doing is saying, okay, give me the name of the token that was just added and put it in a variable called name. Now, what is this line actually doing? So let's break this down. Graphic added right here, this is a special variable that script cards provides. And this contains the ID 
of the token that was added to the battlefield. Every token has an alphanumeric identifier associated with it. And using that alphanumeric identifier, we can retrieve the name of the token using this TNAME property. So basically what we're saying here is look at the graphic that was just added, grab its name, and store it in a variable called name. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is we want to say, well, if the name of that graphic was encounter token, then we want to move it to the GM layer. And that's going to look like this. So we've got this conditional statement, the dash dash question mark, where we look to see if the name dash EQ, that means if it equals encounter token, then we're going to call a special routine called move to GM layer. So let's put in the code for that. That's going to look like this, where we say, okay, we're going to jump down to move to GM layer. And in move to GM layer, what we're going to say here is we're going to grab the graphic that was just added, that is the token that was just added, and we're going to set its layer property to be GM layer. And this dash dash T here, what this means is we are manipulating a token's properties. So we are going to manipulate that token. The ID of the token that we're manipulating is this graphic added. And then we're going to set the token to be on the GM layer. All right. Now, one thing to know about this is when this runs, we're going to get the name. We're going to look to see if it's in counter token. If it is, we're going to move to GM layer. So we pop down here, we call this, but then what would happen is we would return back to the next line and we'd actually run this again. So we would run move to GM layer twice. We don't want that. We want to move to GM layer or not and then exit out of the script card. So that's what this dash dash X is going to do. So we're going to move to the GM layer or not and then be done. So let's take this code, copy it, and we're going to put it into add graphic here and we'll save this. And we'll close script cards triggers. And now one thing we want to do after we've created our trigger is jump back into our game's settings page here. And we want to restart our API sandbox. That's just going to let script cards know that there are now triggers that it needs to work with. So we've got that done. And now we'll come back in here. And you'll notice in my journal, I have my party defined. They're the ones that have the stars next to their names. So we're going to put in Horgrash, Penelope, Prudence, and Ronya. And then my GM helper character sheet, who has the encounter token associated with it, is also part of the party. So if I right click now and say place party, there we go. We see that we've placed all five of those tokens. And encounter token here is actually on the GM layer. So that has worked successfully. But you probably noticed that my chat lit up when I did this. And we've got one, two, three, four, five script cards heading titles here as a result of placing the party. That's because the add graphic event fired five times when I placed the party, once for each token that it created. So it fired every time like it was supposed to, and it looked to see, okay, is this one encounter token? Yes, move it to the GM layer. Then it fired when Prudence's token was added. Is Prudence encounter token? No, skip, move on. Same thing for Penelope. So we lined up with all of these script cards headers showing up in the chat. And we don't want that. We want to suppress that because that's just going to fill our chat up with junk. So the way we fix that is we're going to add one more line into our code. Right after the trigger replacements, we're going to put in this line, hide card, and set it to 1. And that tells script cards to suppress the output from script cards. So we'll no longer put this header into the chat. So let's copy this code now. Let's go back into our character sheet for our script cards triggers. I'm going to replace all this code with what I just added. So now hide card is in there. Let's restart our API sandbox so that script cards has the latest and greatest triggers defined. Close this. Let's delete our characters off the battlefield. I'll delete the encounter token off of the GM layer. Place the party one more time. And there we go. Encounter tokens on the GM layer. My character's tokens are on the token layer and no extra entries have been made in the chat.
Now, somebody out there may say, hey, that's cool, Nick, but what if I have more than one helper token that I'd like to place on the GM layer? Would that be possible? Boy, you like to live on the edge, don't you? Yes, that is possible. Let's see how to do it. The code for that would look like this, where we start out exactly the same. We have the script card here. We trigger our placements. We're hiding the card. And if we look down here, we're still grabbing our name. But there's a couple of new lines in here. For starters, this line 5 is creating an array. And if you're not familiar with what an array is, an array is just a list of items. And so what line 5 is doing here is we're saying, all right, we have an array command that we're performing. Specifically, we are defining that array. So we're creating an array. This is the name of the array that we're creating. So we are creating an array called GM layer tokens. And then we have a list of all of the items that we're adding to that array. So here's the name of the first token, which is going to be an encounter token. And then I have another one called helper two. And then if I had more, I could just keep putting semicolons and then their names, right? So you just define the list of all the tokens that you want to move to the GM layer in this GM layer token array. Line seven is exactly the same as what we had before. We're grabbing the ID of the graphic that was added, we're getting its name, and we're putting it into the name variable. So now, instead of doing a straight comparison to see if the name of the graphic equals encounter token, what we want to do is check to see if the name of the graphic that was just added is present in the GM layer token array. So is the name that we just added in here and then if it is we're going to move to the gm layer just like we did before and if it's not then we won't but the way we determine whether or not the item is present in the array is with another special array function called index of so again on line eight here what we've got is an array command index of and index of tells us the position in the array where a particular entry lives so just so you know arrays are zero based so we have two items in our array right now encounter token is item number zero and helper two is item number one and so what this is going to say here is if the name of the graphic that got added is encounter token then the index of encounter token in gm layer tokens is zero and the index of helper two is one so if the item that we're searching for is present in the array we're going to receive a number between zero and whatever the total number of items are in the array in our case two so we'll get back something between zero and two if the item is not present in the array then we get a message that says array error so what we're checking here is we're grabbing the index of and we're storing that in a variable name called index and then we check to see if the value of index is greater than or equal to zero. If it is, then it means we found the item that was in the array and we're going to move it to the GM layer. But if it isn't in the array, then we're going to get that array error, which is not greater than or equal to zero, and we'll just skip it and continue on. So there you have it, automatically moving tokens to the GM layer when you place the party on a battle map. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, happy gaming.